Star Trek. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Newbie Star Trek, the show where uh, we don't know very much about Star Trek, but we're watching it anyway. <laughs> That's a good uh, description. Yeah, yeah. We're uh, we're watching it. Dan and I are refreshing our memories. Uh, Ricardo has never seen the show, specifically TNG. Also, all of it except yeah. the movies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, we're and, and I don't even remember the movies. I don't remember the JJ Abrams movies, and I watched them a couple years ago. All those movies are a fucking blur, man. They're like, <laughs> yeah, they're pretty blurry. It's like I barely, yeah. rem- I barely, I've seen the first movie JJ Abrams Star Trek three times, and I barely remember the the plot points. Because I only remember moments. I remember, uh, what's his name? Tyler Perry being a judge. And I Winona Ryder's being a mom. Winona Ryder being crushed by rocks. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and then, uh, uh, the weirdness of, uh, what's her name? What is Uhura's car- uh, actor? What's her name? Uh, um, Zoe Zaldana? Yeah, Zoe yeah. Saldana. She was she's like walking around following uh, Spock, and she's like, "Didn't didn't and didn't I exhibit very good oral efficiency?" I was like, "What are you talking about? What is oral efficiency talking to your about a blowjob to your to your teacher who is now your your boyfriend? What is going on? Is this a beautiful mind? What is going on here? Uh, What's going on?" <laughs> Ah, uh, but that's the that's, that's the podcast. Everybody, we're here. We're watching Haven, or we we have watched Haven, yeah. Which is a very weird episode. It's it's more backstory of of Deanna Troy and Riker. More Deanna. Riker is like kind of in it. He's he's actually not that in it. And then uh, we get introduced to Deanna's mom, Luxwana, Luxwana Troy. Luox- we- yeah, Luxana. Luxana Troy. Luxana. I, I'm, I'm, I'm very bad at pronouncing her name, but her fu- her full title straight it- out of a sitcom. <laughs> her uh, her full title is uh, Luxwana Troy, daughter of the fifth house, holder of the sacred chalice of Rix, heir to the holy rings of Beta Zed. Uh, I don't know what that means. I don't know if that means she's royalty, but it sure. probably doesn't. <laughs> Given her attitude in general, she, yeah, it's probably not shit. These these are just just old like tea sets she's been uh, inheriting over the generations. Yeah, like she she just <laughs> found something at a flea market and said, "I am now the holder of this chalice." <laughs> See, it's probably that's probably literally exactly what it is. I'm holding it. <laughs> Witness uh, <Eddie>. me. <laughs> uh, this episode, Haven, uh, premiered on November 30th, 1987. Dan, you had sort of primed us to expect some dark news. So please, if you would. Before I get to that dark news, I said last week that that running man would be dethroned by a movie. Yeah, and um, this this. This iconic classic starring Tom Selleck, Steve Gutenberg, and Ted Danson, who play three men <laughs> who become entangled with a baby. There's a movie about it. It's top of the box that's, office that that's week. That's great. That, that's what dethroned right now. <laughs> the three men and a baby uh, takes the top of the box office for this week and um, actually will continue to do so for another week. Oh, man. Did then, you know Tom Selleck was almost Indiana Jones? I could see it. Yeah, like he was approached for the part of Indiana Jones, but then he said, I can't do that. We have to shoot the Magnum P.I. movie. Ah, boy, see? Boy, yeah, and then he, then, yeah. He would have been <laughs> both, then he would have become mean, both Chip and Dale. You mean the, the, the pilot? You mean the, the pilot for the show? No, I think he... Uh, yeah, believes well something something for Magnum PI specifically, but I think they had already been doing it for a little while when they when they were approached for for um well, I don't know the timeline at all. Yeah. When did Raiders of the Lost Ark? That's come my out? memory of it at least is that he turned it down for Magnum PI or something huh. like that. Interesting, yeah. interesting, and, interesting. And it, and it was something ongoing. I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, everyone will find us somewhere. We're we're on Instagram and Facebook and. The TikTok and if we're wrong, we don't apologize. So fuck you. Yeah, just yell at us, and then we won't read it. Yell at us. <laughs> we may hear you. 
Yes. So just try it. I wonder. I wonder if if so. Like this. This you saying that to uh, three men and a baby dethroned the Running Man is is an interesting thing because after after Running Man, Arnold only made well Red Heat was already made when this came out. So. Right. Red Heat was in the can. He did Total Recall, mm-hmm. and then after Total Recall, he he shifts completely. And this was when he started his weird comedy weird, phase. Yeah, comedy phase, like he, Kindergarten he, Cop. And- Kindergarten Cop was right after that. So I wonder if he's like, oh, that that those thirty men and a baby, like, <laughs> they did throw me. I must make a comedy. That's the motivation. Yeah, he's yeah. like these motherfuckers. <laughs> that would <laughs> actually be kind of amazing. If he his inspiration for going like because that that was a bad move for, yeah. for his career. <laughs> what to make comedy? I think I think it was a great move. You know, like uh, it, I mean, it it's introduced us to a whole new side of Arnold. It's definitely his downfall. <laughs> like, I don't think I, so. I, I I love. I mean, he always kind of had that humor in his in his movies in a weird way, but like he kind of started letting it happen a little more, like. Uh, look we're taking a really weird detour but like <laughs> i don't mind i don't mind twins i don't mind i don't no. mind kindergarten cop i don't mind a lot of those movies i, I like kindergarten fine. cop um, like I, like so true lies is a combination of everything of everything right, you learn right. from the comedies yeah, yeah. and everything. yeah 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 and, and it is he, the quintessential combine everything about arnold into one movie uh movie well even yeah. commando like you know your quintessential action arnold movie he, he's full of one-liners and being funny and oh yeah that's but that's like less like we're trying to be outright funny and more of like it's like a, it's almost ironic except it's the 80s so it wasn't ironic you know what i mean it's like this is just this feeling of being flippant and like it's actually cool to have that one liner back in the day. But I don't know. That's Please I, don't disturb my friend. He's, he's dead t- tired. Yeah. Yeah. It's supposed to be like, oh, it's fun. That's a fun badass thing. No, uh, it's even closer than I thought. So, no, no, no. So, so Running Man, Running Man comes out. Yeah. And then Red Heat is already in the can. And mm. then the next movie he does is not Total Recall, it's Twins. Wow. Oh, yeah, right away. Yeah. It must yeah. have been because of he's like, you know what? Fuck. We only need men. two guys to be funny. Yeah. We don't need yeah. three guys. We split we'll- the we split the third guy's in the baby's <laughs> salary between Danny DeVito and I. And we're, we're good. <laughs> that just reminds me Look, of that. We can't that afford commercial. a baby. <laughs> Yeah, it reminded yeah. me of that commercial Dan uh, told me about, where like local news channel or local TV station had this like terrible oh, yeah. like rip off song of, of of twins with the rip off Arnold Schwarzenegger voice. Yeah, they had an Arnold Schwarzenegger impersonator guy sing this song about it would go Watch something twins. like "We're brothers." identical twins as you can see why watch another movie and you can see two of me <laughs> wow uh they don't do like super local commercials like that anymore i haven't watched tv in a while like broadcast television so maybe they do you know it's like, the weirdest goddamn thing in the world it's when what? you try to watch tv that isn't hooked up to cable now when you try to pick up like the digital signals that are that are being oh. sent over the air, and it's like, <laughs> hey, here's channel seven, here's channel seven dash two. Yeah, I like that. What and it's like, what that? the fuck is it going on? What, like, what is seven dash two? Now is it, they're, is it, they're local channels. Yeah, like you don't just wait. have integers anymore. You have dashes now. Wait, wait, wait. What is it? Is it like radio where you have an HD one and an HD two signal, or is it more? That's the same radio station. You just have two alternate ones, or is it like? Look, buddy, I don't fuck with it. Uh, is it still I, I considered ABC? It, like, it's, it's, it's sometimes like seven dash one is ABC or some shit. So what's seven dash two? Is that also ABC, but like a different alternate? I don't ABC? know, but I have noticed a severe uptick in Vietnamese programming. <laughs> I, I, I think, I think, I think they they break down to like. So like channel seven is like LA's ABC, right? Yes. Okay. That's, that's okay. for people who are in different, different part of the world. So, right. so ABC is channel seven here. And then 7.2 or 7.3 is like even more local than that. It's like the, the city channel. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That, that's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. I think. <laughs> I don't know look. why it became more like complicated. I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. This, is, this is, this is why Netflix is winning. I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is so confusing. Like, it's like, it's like legitimately confusing. I'm not sure what's going on. I still uh, know. 
and I've seen uh, it. Yeah, yeah. Let anyway. it happen. Let it happen. Uh, um, oh, right. We're still in history. <laughs> All that uh, just to get to the, the downer news. <laughs> because just the day before on the 29th in 80, of November uh, 87, North Korean agents had just blown up a Korean air flight, number oh, 858. Yeah, yeah. And, that, and that killed 115 people in one, in one go. That, that was that, a pretty devastating incident. Yeah, yeah that, that, was a, that was a really big deal at the time. And yeah. also on the actual date of 11.30, one notable novelist slash essayist slash playwright slash activist by the name of James Baldwin passed away at the age of 63. Oh, yeah. Okay. Cool wow, guy, he died that much, dude. He died much younger than I thought he did. Yeah, yeah. it was unfortunate. But yeah. By the way, everyone, uh, if you haven't seen I Am Not Your Negro yet, you should watch that. It's quite a good movie. Uh, it's, it's very good. Uh, it's about uh, Sort of like a, a way to finish James Baldwin's last book, mm. but in film form. It's a very fascinating take on his on his work because it's a documentary, but it's based on a book, so it's kind of interesting. Uh, anyway, uh, this, um, so yeah, that 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 was history for me. Oh, thank you, thank you, Dan. Uh, well, this this week's episode is Haven, uh, which uh, is again, uh, any anyway, Ricardo will get into it. Ricardo, can you? Give I can what you and I will happened in this episode. Okay, I know last year, last year, last week we we left <laughs> in the cliffhanger of like, hey, next episode's gonna suck ass. Uh, but no, I quite enjoyed it. I had so some you fun enjoyed with it. it. Okay, yeah. See, this that's I think that's part of why I like having the different perspectives because I don't like this episode, but I'm glad you liked it. I think that made- you are easily the one who likes the episode the least. Because yeah. I, I do find, you know, the character of Luxana like completely insufferable. I hate her guts, <laughs> but there is enough else going on in the episode. It's like, eh, this is all right. I'm okay I, with the rest a lot of, it. of A lot of my annoyance with the, with the episode is that very little happens and nothing is explained and things are just happening. As which and it's also like a really messy A, B, A story, B story script. Which okay. uh, I, I'm not a huge fan, but anyway, Ricardo will will walk us through what happened. <clears throat> okay, so we have uh, they're going to this planet called Haven. the The mm-hmm. whole crew is, is up for some some rest and relaxation. They're going to go yeah. to this planet, and they're going to the the planet is rumored to have like these healing powers where you can you kind of rejuvenate and you you know everything gets taut. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, maybe there's, I don't know, maybe people get start fucking, I don't Just know. Just bathe in Botox. It's yeah, implied yeah. it's another fuck planet. Yeah, yeah, pretty everyone's. much. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and everyone's hot uh, and, and, uh, so er- everything's, everything's, everybody's looking forward to this, man. Everyone's ready to party. And then, uh, Lieutenant Tasha, mm-hmm. She is like, oh, there's something beaming up from the planet. I should call Riker. Riker's fucking looking at porn. (laughs) It's a weird. He's looking at some really. It's like really weird soft core porn. No, 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 no. It's the beginning of a porno. You can tell right away. (laughs) He's the way he's looking at it and smiling. You could tell like he's and they're looking at him. So it's POV. Yeah. 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 And then he's he's really into the storyline. He's really into the storyline. He does lean back and he's about to get ready for something. And they're like, hey, what are you doing, step bro? Yeah. 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 Um, And uh, he's definitely looking at porno. And uh, he gets called by Tasha. Yeah. And she's like, hey, something's getting beamed up from Old Haven. Uh, We should check it out. Be be vigilant. And he's like, all right. Let let it let it let it in. Let the right one in. Yeah. And this weird like chest, like silver chest <laughs> with so a weird bizarre. face. Like it's like techno zombie. Yeah, yeah. And it reminds it, me of the 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 hub from from Tron. You know, the guy who's just stuck in the floor, and when they approach him, he goes, "You have, I am the hub, or whatever." You oh man, I don't remember this. that. He's that he's that big chunky guy who's stuck in the floor, but he's like the the hub in Tron, and they approach him. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm okay. Yeah. I can only think of MCP's big old face. <laughs> and and so in this this, this thing's there, and like Tasha's like, "What the fuck is it?" And then Deanna Troy shows up, and then the thing like turns on, like he sees her, and he's like, "Hey, I got a message for old Deanna Troy." 
and, like and a high, make a high knee ho. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, hey, this is a, a message from Luxana. Basically, like, hey, uh, Luxana and the Miller family are going to come aboard in a bit. Rejoice. Uh, it's going to be great. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. And this is this is for you. Blah. And Di- <laughs> Diana. <laughs> And the dog Troy, just barfs jewels. Yeah. <laughs> and Deanna Troy's like, oh, fuck. She's got like this face of disgust. She's like, oh, no, fuck, dude. And she starts backing away and like, and like, Riker's like, what the fuck's going on? And all of a sudden, like, it opens up. It's like, it's like dick hole. I guess where its dick would be just opens up and like all these jewels just come fucking <laughs> pouring out of it. Everybody gets startled. They're like, what the hell? And, and all these jewels come out and, and, and they're like, look at all these goddamn, j-. like Tasha's like, look at all these goddamn jewels. Oh, and, and geez. she's like, Deontre is like, they're, they're bonding gifts. It's a dowry. And now she didn't say it's a dowry, but it's I imagine. Yeah, yeah, this episode is essentially a take on, on arranged marriage. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah. And, and she, she looks all sad and she's like, I, I, he, and then Riker's like, who's going to get married? And he's like, and she's like, I am. Oh no. <laughs> And I forgot. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and then, and then, uh, so they, they go to the captain's quarters and he's like, and they're, they're explaining everything like, Hey, basically like she's, it's an arranged marriage basically. Yeah. And, and Riker's in the background, just fucking sulking. He's like, fucking shit, dude. <laughs> I thought I was going to have more time to fuck her and leave her later, but not anymore. <laughs> uh, Riker's pissed, dude. And yeah. he's like, ugh. And, and, uh, he's like, yeah, we got to host like my mother basically. And my, and my future in-laws, the Millers. And she's like, oh, it's fine. They, are they going to stay here? And they're like, yeah, they're going to, they're going to stay here. And and then Picard's like, Hey, are you going to cool? You're going to get married. That's fine. Yeah, I don't give yeah. a shit about your fucking customers. <laughs> Unfortunately, the- are you going to leave or are you going to stay? And she's like, <laughs> yeah. nah, I'm going to leave. And she's like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I, need, I need a telepath here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, the father of the of the groom, his name is Stephen Miller. <laughs> yeah, so that's not great. Oof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the, the singer songwriter. Luckily, that's um, just the in law. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. you can. Yeah. Stephen Miller is a piece of shit fucking artist. Um, <laughs> but anyway, and then so the captain leaves. He he's like he feels the tension in the room, and he's like, "Yeah, oh boy, I'm gonna get out of here. See you guys later." Yeah. And he so leaves. You and got then, something's going on. I'm yeah. not gonna. And then Riker wrong. does the whole fucking James Dean move, where he puts his arm in the fucking wall and hold, like is holding. Yeah. Out his, and I'm like, dude, th- this this is not a good look for you, man. Stop yeah. sulking, dude. If you <laughs> if you cared this much, yeah, why did you not make a move? for this long it doesn't yeah. and instead went to the fuck planet yeah and fucked everyone there yeah and then now you're so well, those are that she's safe sa- non-committal fucks <laughs> it's you know like what? as soon as she's unavailable you're like devastated yeah it's just like come you on you know what man. i'm gonna say hey, it, man it's riker's tale's old a, as time oh uh, yeah riker is a fuck boy <laughs> he, <laughs> he does come off as one here yeah yeah yeah, dude. yeah. He's like he's like the fuck boy who is like willing to ask for who who wants to ask for consent that's like him. He's like, yeah, yeah. Do you want to do it? Well, all right, let's do it. And that's that's him. But yeah, you know, it's still weird though because he's like he's like the second in command. So everyone's like, well, of course I'll fuck you. You're Riker, yeah. second in command of the Enterprise. So he kind of takes advantage of that. And he's, and, he's uh, he's a yeah, weird he's a yeah. big old fuck boy, dude. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> Diana's basically like, uh, will you come dance at my wedding, please? And he's like, I'll fucking try, but no promises, no promises. And he walks away like, like a fucking badass, yeah. uh, like a yeah. badass fuck boy. And then Data comes in. He's like, Hey, we have uh, we have a message from from Haven. Your 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 parents want to beam up, or your mom? Some bullshit, dude. Go go to the bridge. <laughs> and then so Deanna Troy goes to the bridge, and the first ones to beam up are the Millers. Mm-hmm. And this is very very uh, interesting right away for me. So we have the dad and the the mom of uh, the guy she's marrying. The guy she's mm-hmm. marrying is Wyatt Miller, mm-hmm. and uh, it's Victoria Miller and Stephen Miller were the parents. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. And uh, crazy fact, a uh, little fucking trivia here: Wyatt Miller is played by Teabag from oh, yeah. uh, from Prison Break, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Whoa, Teabag!" Oh shit! <laughs> I you had didn't realize, realize that, that Marvin? I, yeah. I didn't realize. That. That's yeah, man. <laughs> That's Theodore Bagwell. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like as soon as he gets oh off, as soon yeah. as he sees Deanna, he should be like, "Hey, pretty, 
Oh my god! It I just need, I just needed to see that goatee on him. I think that would have cinched it. Oh my god! I did not yeah. make that connection whatsoever. Yeah. Holy I, shit! I always thought he was a good actor, but after this, I was like, yeah, dude, this guy's this guy's putting he in work. He is good. Dude. He is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh man, yeah. that's so funny. I didn't even um, make that connection. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, like after this, he's just ended up getting like typecast as sleaze bags. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, after playing like the nicest guy in the world. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And like, yeah. yeah. And then and then I realized that the mom, the, the lady who plays the mom, she's in Shallow Hell. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know if anybody's a fan of Shallow Hell, but I am. Yeah. She's one of the girls who who like his she looks really hot to hell. It's it's one of like Gwyneth Paltrow's friends. And mm-hmm. then when you see her in real life, it's this lady. It's not this <laughs> really hot, young hot girl. It's right, right. this lady. And uh, I remember her because she's wearing the, the young lady's clothes. But mm-hmm, it's yeah. this, it's his face. It's really really funny. I she's, like a, she's a character actor that shows, but she had yeah. showed up in a bunch of stuff. And she's yeah. like she's very like uh, I think she was in Castaway. Yep. As, um, yep. As, yep. As, um, as Wait, we're talking about the one someone. who played Victoria, right? Victoria. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah. She's just she's just been in a ton of stuff. She's one of those like oh I I know her. She's in, yeah. she's been in something. And then they have a moment, and like immediately, fucking teabag is fucking like disappointed. He's like, oh boy. <laughs> This is not the woman I, I like you get you could tell in the background and he's like, Oh fuck, dude, this is the wrong one. And he's like timid and he's like, Hey, brought you this chameleon flower, it turns into whatever color you're feeling. Yeah. And like, but you know what? In in all honesty, he's like a really nice guy. Like he's he he's she's well. trying to like be a good person and yeah. take everything in stride yeah. very well. And yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And so they his parents leave, they're they're gonna go like find a quarters to to rest <laughs> and then and teabag leaves with him and then uh as soon as as soon as they leave old laxana what's, what's her last name is her last name troy Lux- as well it's also troy yeah mm-hmm. laxana troy she shows up and it's diana troy's mom and guess who she has as a valet yeah. fucking lurch dude yeah, yeah lurch yeah, yeah, yeah is yeah. in the house dude and yeah. lurch is so tall he almost reaches to the top of that that transporter thing yeah um he's and got i think to, he like, has to show up in the middle transporter because yeah so he's so <laughs> fucking tall <laughs> and she shows up and she's talking to diana like through telepathy like they're not mm-hmm. really talking yeah and you know what she's over the top but i like her i like this character a lot yeah. she's by just, the way uh actor who plays her Marshall Bird roddenberry uh she's gene roddenberry's wife oh uh-huh. really yeah so uh that's kind of why she has this air about her where if you if you're aware of that it's, it's almost like you're seeing like some insertion into the show not a necessarily a bad way i think no Luxana as a character can be overbearing but i think she has a role that works for the show and uh- does she? I, well, I don't want to know if she reappears, but I think it works because she is that overbearing mom that thinks that everyone should should bend the knee to her because her yeah. needs. You know? And it's not even just because she's a mom; it's because that she's a beta Z. Like beta yeah, yeah. Zs in general are just like this. And actually, Deanna Troy had to kind of grow to not have those traits. What's so the difference in terminology between a beta Zoid and a beta Z? Because I feel oh, like they're interchangeable. Both. Okay. It's interchangeable. It's it's I think what happened is they accidentally said Zoid or Zed at one point and they're just like, let's just roll with it, whatever. <laughs> All right. It just kept yeah. going. There's no explanation for why there's both. They just and, do it. And then Luxana like asked uh, uh, Captain Louis Picard to carry your fucking bag to yeah. the room. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then I like Picard we- the way he interacts with her, because he's like, Oh, I'll, I'm trying to be a polite gentleman, but yeah, yeah. And <laughs> the suitcase is heavy as shit. And then halfway through it, like he can't carry it, and Lurch has to fucking carry it, and Lurch has yeah. no problem carrying. He's fucking strong as shit, dude. Yeah. And then she she's talking about her her I guess her last valet who she had to fire because he, he kept having pornographic thoughts about her. <laughs> <laughs> and um and so they they they're she's really funny. I I she's she reminds me like of a Mel Brooks character. Oh, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. If, like, that's, if that's... like, if like Star Trek, if Mel Brooks directed an episode of Star Trek, this is a character he would fast write. talking like a Mel Brooks character. Yes, you know? yes, so yes. It's, she, she, she can go, especially in that turbo lift scene, she can go like a mile a minute. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and she she gets all this information. They basically they're like, yeah, so you know, uh, we're gonna be here a while, and this is what we're gonna do, and this is, and like she kind of lays it out and everything. And she basically she kind of insulting the captain in in the very weird way but he he's he's pretty good about it like he 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 takes it in stride and he's like i get it she's a fucking bitch Mm -hmm. uh and and he 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 leaves and they have this conversation about like 
her being a certain way and like you see that she's really overbearing and then there's the ble- the the ble- the b the b plot line which is you have these dudes what are they called the electrolytes or what are they called Oh, the Torellians? Uh, Torellians. I was way off. The <laughs> electrolytes. <laughs> <laughs> I have a fun anecdote about the Torellians. What's uh, up with the Torellians? Talk to so, me. So they only show up in this episode, so they're okay. nothing, right? But for some reason, Star Trek really loves the term Torellian. So if you look up, because ter- a little bit inside baseball, whenever we uh, get ready for an episode, I, I look up in memory alpha, just to look for random facts and whatever. Mm-hmm. And if you look at the Torellian page, it says at the top, this page features the Torellians. It is possible you may also be looking for the Torellians, 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 or Tyrellians. Yep. <laughs> so <laughs> the Star Trek <laughs> has just repeated this very similar sounding name at least in four more different occasions, and they just don't care. <laughs> they, it's like, they which Final not- Fantasy character do you want to learn about? Sid? Sid? <laughs> Sid? Or Sid? Or you got to do that like, you got to do that like, at this point like 12 more times <laughs> yeah because they because they just kept using it yeah anyway the, um they so they're like hey these these dudes like basically they're 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 like a leper colony <laughs> they're they're like they have this plague that they're dying and they basically wiped out their whole planet because they fucked up they created yeah. a, a, a biological a super, weapon a super bug yeah, well, yeah they, they it's, fucked it's up. like yeah. yet another condemnation of like modern human society of the time it's like yeah. well they made it to late 20th century like <laughs> yeah. you know levels of technology it's like oh, oh what a horrible time oh jeez <laughs> uh, you know making making viruses for themselves and killing themselves off oh hatred prevailed oh jeez <laughs> Yeah. And and then so like they're like hey you, we we better keep an eye on these dudes the people from Haven are like we don't want these dudes here because we don't want their their super herpes their their super gonorrhea you gotta fucking gonna light be- them up in the sky yeah. right now <laughs> shoot them up shoot them up and then um you have this really cool scene with with Teabag and um <laughs> and uh, Deanna Troy and yeah. they kind of like he, she comes in to apologize for her mother and he's like nah that's cool I I like her honesty I I don't I don't mind her yeah and basically they they have this like really great bonding moment where he like you find out he's a doctor and like he he's kind of has like a good heart and it, he has these drawings of this woman and and she's like oh who who what's up with these drawings and she's like oh basically you find out why he looked disappointed when he first showed up it's because he's been having these dreams since he was young about this girl and he has drawings of her Mm -hmm. and he thought that was going to be her he thought he was telepath telepathically linked to her and that's that's who but you know what's so weird is that like for an arranged marriage it's a future you don't think somebody would send him a picture like oh this is what your future wife looks like that way he prepares one of many things about this episode that i find kind of frustrating is that they have this central premise that's a mystery and then they go out of their way to just not solve it like they they like they set this up like i i I do like this interaction when they have in, in his in his quarters because you know they're both being very polite to each other but then like they very quickly learn things about each other that they find like both both cool and like attractive and like, yeah, like mm-hmm. this will work. Actually, we, we could make this marriage work. Yeah. Yeah. And then you get the hook, which is like, but you're not who I thought you would be based on my dreams. I just assumed because you're a betazoid that you were sending me images and you're like, well, what the fuck's going on there? Right. And yeah, I think you know. we get like a line somewhere. Um, I think later in the episode, kind of a throwaway line where Deanna's mom, it's like, well, I didn't really expect us to have to do this arranged marriage, but they tracked us down. Yeah, there is. And, that and thing so of it's like, like there, there's this implication of like, well, they weren't really in good communication about this arranged marriage. And it's kind of like, a, oh, shit. Well, you know, we're committed to this tradition. We're just going through with it now. Um, but then, but wouldn't you have a picture anyway? <laughs> well, maybe, maybe the Troys yeah, didn't look, provide. But she's a starship officer. <laughs> maybe the Troys. Maybe, maybe Luxana thinks her daughter's ugly. <laughs> <laughs> And he's like, nah, I'm not gonna send pictures. No pics. Aww. Aww. Um, um, I mean, we all think she's 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 fine looking, but not her mother. <laughs> I think pictures um, are obsolete by then. Yeah, yeah. It's all antiquated. So then um so then you have you have this moment where basically the Haven Havenites, whatever you call them, they're like, dude, you gotta blow these guys out of the air. We don't want these Please fuckers. Kill them now. Yeah, kill them now. They're <laughs> so, them like, d- desperate. They're gonna kill us. They're gonna fuck they're gonna fuck up our It's planet. funny because whenever they cut back to the Haven, it's clearly just the lady in a chair. 
yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. their only yeah. like communication with Haven. Is I think she's one, like, standing, but it, it is a very like simple, sparse set. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. we yeah. should this fast yeah. for, for here. And and then um and then you have this conundrum that the captain has to have with a conversation with the whole crew, which is. Look, we thought the the these Lorax or whatever they're called, um, the <laughs> these people, what are they called? <laughs> Lorax. <Lassalarians? laughs> yeah, the the Lorax people. They're like we thought they were all dead, they're all extinct, but it turns out they're not. So we have a duty to protect the Lorax to be like, hey, yeah. they're the last of the Lorax. Let's protect these people yeah. and see if we could help <laughs> them because they're the last of their Lorax. If people like and us don't you, care a whole lot, then nothing will no. change. It no, will not. <laughs> and, but, but but also it, it's it's their duty to to protect the the Havenites to be like, hey, yeah, we don't pickle. want. To, yeah, they're in a quite a pickle, dude. It literally, literally and figuratively, big old pickle, dude. <laughs> and so they're they're discussing the options and like what are the cons and pros of like taking these people and 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 they basically end up with like, well, we have to do what's best for both people. We have to figure out an option for both. And then there's another conversation going on about the wedding being held there, and then old fucking they're doing the preparations. Right? They're gonna have yeah. the, the dinner, the pre-wedding yeah. dinner, and all yeah. that stuff. And it's it's done in the dining room, uh, which is a set that never shows up again. And in ever? fact, ever it only oh, showed wow. up once before this. It, it was during the the Wesley being space Mozart episode where that guy was eating by himself in the dining room. Oh yeah, yeah. All right, <laughs> that's, that's the only other time it showed up. But I think they realized the set's really boring. So we're it is just very to dismantle boring. it, and then when from now on, whenever they have like a big dining room scene or eating scene. They just do it at 10 forward and it's a much better set. <laughs> yeah. Cause it's a bar. And so, so the next scene is the, like the, I guess you would call like the rehearsal dinner kind of. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah. Or just pre-wedding dinner, whatever. Yeah, the, yeah. Yeah. And old Lurch is like, start drinking and he fucking loves to pound. He this loves guy to is, yep. he's a frat guy, dude. He's fucking tr- pounding <laughs> him down, dude. Four logos <laughs> on each hand, dude. And uh, he's drinking and he can't stop drinking. <laughs> drinks of every color green orange yellow blue he if if you got the drinks he's gonna drink them it's happening then, again yeah and then data <laughs> data is like man this is fascinating yeah like, data he, is like like walk like picard even tells him you're hovering you're being really weird you're being but data just like this is awesome yeah it's like <laughs> i love watching people get annoyed with each other this is the best <laughs> yeah. it's fascinating it's yeah very good so he's like so up, the, he's like all up on this mr hom guy which is like yeah, the name of the valet yeah. and he's like were you in yeah. twin peaks <laughs> <laughs> and then miller's fucking white miller's mom is like well you're the captain you're very prestigious you should be the officiant of the wedding and luxon is like nah nah this fucker's not qualified <laughs> <laughs> and he's like mr my 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 manservant lurch will do it and you're like that idiot he's he's fucking pounding he's not gonna be sober tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> Gong. i thought that i thought that was gonna be a thing where he <laughs> like because he's drinking so much i thought he was gonna get the, the scene would end with him getting knocked out <laughs> yeah, 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 but it, it didn't. Me too. Happen. Me too. Yeah, yeah. And then so you find out that there's going to be like some like rituals, and that that at the end, like the ceremony, basically, eventually you end up naked. So yeah. like like the groom and the bride will be naked, and the the father of the bride, the parents of the bride, and the parents of the of the groom will all be naked, and everyone's like, oh my god. <laughs> but Luxana's is like, yeah, your husband's like looking forward to it and stuff. Uh, she could read minds yeah and then so there's a lot of domestic strife in this scene and they're <laughs> they're just bickering and data's fucking loving it they keep cutting a data just being fucking fascinated by it <laughs> and so it cut to the scene with a dinner and everyone's wearing the same uniform it's probably like a couple hours later not even an hour it's like maybe like 20 minutes after the what you would call the appetizer yeah, yeah. uh like a uh, time so now it's dinner time. They're all around the table. They're all drinking out of plastic cups that look like they're from the Dollar Tree. They look shitty <laughs> as shit, dude. But the future, all the production the design has... looks so like bad, like so bad. The, the 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 food looks so unappealing. Yeah, yeah. It looks yeah. like it looks like they just grabbed it from the catering that day and just put it on a tray, and it's just yes. whatever salad yes. was available that day. It doesn't That's look it. appetizing at all. And so, er, er, like Luke, uh, Luke Picard does a toast, and everyone's drinking, and then you, they, they're they're panning to all the characters, and like Doctor, um, 
Doctor, what's her name? Oh, uh, Crusher? Mm-hmm. Crusher, yeah. Oh, Crusher, she, she, yeah. Like her hair's done up. You're like, oh, she's Yeah, she, everyone's got her their hair. hair done up. She got her Fucking hair done. Tasha's Tasha, got her hair. Tasha yeah. has like feathered hair. I love it, dude. I love what's it's like happening the, with her hair. It, it's, it's really like tall. almost like a her take on a Captain Marvel hair look. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I like it quite a bit. Yeah. Looks, uh, Tro- Deanna's hair is all done up, you know. Yeah. And Lurch is still fucking just pounding in the background. Yeah. It's fucking <laughs> pounding him back, dude. In between yeah. gongs. Yeah, yeah. 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 And you, you have, again, like this whole, the, the fucking, not Wesley, uh, stupid Wyatt. <laughs> Wyatt is talking about like how, like basically about like what he, what he does as a doctor and all this stuff and, and like his, his, yeah. his studies and stuff. And Lurch keeps ringing a bell. And they're like, what the fuck is he ringing a bell for? <laughs> and Data just keeps hovering and like yeah. looking at the, domestic strife that's happening and uh it's a really fun funny scene i think yeah it's a funny scene the thing that bothers me is that like this episode seems to not have interactions that make sense to me like for example when Bri- wyatt sits down right and wyatt goes oh are you are, so i heard Torellians are here oh i studied all sorts of shit about Torellians. And then Dr. Crusher goes, oh, I would, you're a doctor. I, I would love if you could help me. It's like, you, you would, you just figured this out during a dinner. Yeah. Like, wouldn't you, wouldn't you like be like, what is it? Unprecedented- yeah. Is this an unprecedented event? Are there any other medical personnel on this board- ship that could currently help? <laughs> Dr. Yeah. Crusher he, just ca- crashed that wedding party. <laughs> he yeah, just casually mentions and started it. Eating. Yeah. It's like, oh, she you're a doctor. It's also so odd because he's, uh, they, they have that briefing in the conference room, right? And they're like, okay, the Torellians are going to be within teleporter range in like 12 hours or something, right? And they're like, okay, so that's bad. But then uh, right before they break the meeting, Picard goes, oh, but, you know, doesn't mean we can't have time for a a wedding dinner party. (laughs) (laughs) And then that's when they have the wedding scene, the, the dinner scene. And you're like, what? What is, it's like the, the, they didn't connect these plots together at all. They're just yeah. like, yeah, it, it's just happening. Things are just happening, and you know, it it's it's annoying. But and just- and um, it's it, it is a fun scene because of the two moms. The they're they're yeah. really funny together. And uh, Luxana has his like plant around her arm, and she's like, "Hey, hey, White's mom, do you like pets?" She's like, "Yeah, I like pets." And then she's she's like poison ivy, and she she has a <laughs> plant like crawl up her arm and she freaks out and fucking losing it yeah. and then old Riker's like fucking pouting and he leaves and he goes into the what is it called the danger room or what is, what is it called here a hollow oh. <laughs> the hollow the uh, danger, room. danger, the danger deck. room yeah mm-hmm. danger deck and he's like he can he can make it into anything and he makes it a weird desolate fucking desert. <laughs> <laughs> he could literally make it be it's the a beach. reflection of his emotions at the time. i guess so fucking pouting <laughs> bitch and he's like oh i'm pouting on this rock oh my and basically she, uh, uh deanna troy comes in and she's like she basically it's like well the subtext of this is basically like, well, you had a chance to suit me up, but you didn't. You're all like, oh, I want to be a captain one day. Yeah. He's also being like, she's also explaining to him like, oh, I see you're being a child. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes. You don't know the difference between platonic, platonic love and physical love. And what's funny so is that he just straight up, he just straight up admits it. That, yes, you're like, right. Yes, that is my problem. <laughs> it's, I, I, I like the the illusion. It, it there's a scene earlier in, in Picard's ready room where they talked, and then it, this that scene sort of sets up this. So let me just play it really quick. Bill, more than anything in the world, anything. You want to be a starship captain, true? That's not all I want, Deanna. I can feel that. I know you care within those limits. Did you hear what I said? Every word. This whole thing is still bizarre. I'm sorry. Come dance at my wedding. I'll try. So that was uh, back in the ready room scene. So that that sort of sets the thesis for why Riker is supposedly the way to, way he is, but it doesn't come off to me as believable primarily because Riker, I guess the implication is that because he's trying to be on the career track to be a captain, he can't allow room in his life for a relationship. Which doesn't make a ton of sense to me. Doesn't make sense at all. Yeah, yeah well, especially considering like you know later seasons and how the and how those play out. It's like why why did you? 
it just I, it feels like just an excuse but then troy is entertaining it so that that's why this scene later feels more of like troy going like well you know your explanation doesn't necessarily make a ton of sense um <laughs> and like i know we have feelings for each other but then you know, nothing happened, you know, so it's- I do feel that it's fairly clunky. Like I'm not even 100% sure of the subtext they're going for. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a little awkward. And then out of nowhere, why it just walks in. <laughs> Yeah. Like, wow, well, this yeah. place is great. Yeah, let yeah. me let me play the scene because I, I find it quite funny. I will miss you, Deanna. I'm no longer anxiety to you. You taught me that word means my beloved. And the human heart is too small to permit that feeling now. Have you discussed this with Wyatt? I think you should. It's also damned unfair to me. I understand. I should have realized. Humans, young human males particularly, have difficulty separating platonic love and physical love. The problem is... Imzadi. I couldn't. Not now. Call it an old, an old earth tradition. <laughs> Habit of the beasts. Whatever. Hello, you two. <laughs> We're just talking about you, Wyatt. This is incredible. Yeah. <laughs> and in that discussion, Actually, I... Actually, Bill was concerned that you might be upset that I care deeply for him, too. Oh, you're the one who wants to be a starship captain. Yes, I've heard that bonding or marriage would complicate things in that case. To each his own. Good luck with that ambition. First of all, Riker is just an asshole. He's like, I, I have been wrong. It's like nothing. He, you weren't in a relationship with her, so I don't know why you're causing such a big hubbub around this. But I do like Wyatt. Like he, he makes the implication that Wyatt would be angry about this, but then Wyatt literally walks in and goes, "No, I have no problem with this. Good luck." <laughs> and he's like completely okay with that, you know? Well, it's not that he's like. It's not like he directly addresses the fact that that Deanna cares deeply for Bill but or for Riker but he's like oh you're the one who wants to be a star starship captain sounds like a sounds like a rough time man <laughs> you you do you you do that yeah but she does directly say in the scene hey uh, Riker is worried that I also care about him as much as you and then he goes oh whatever yeah it, it, it feels like it a yeah it feels like a <laughs> deflection really it, it doesn't yeah. seem like he actually answers the question yeah it's uh it's interesting but he he takes it pretty but he well. remains good natured throughout i'll give him that yeah he's he's not like ready for fisticuffs or anything he i mean why goes, would he be it's she's not even <laughs> the real lady he wanted that's that's true yeah yeah, and and he he's a good sport. I I do enjoy, like that about about he didn't deck a motherfucker. He just like oh, <laughs> fucking him out. He, he, I think deep down he's like she's not gonna marry you, dude. She's in love with me, dude. You bitch ass doctor. <laughs> and um and so when they go back to everybody goes back to their their post and they get first first of all throughout the whole episode the Lorax people aren't like <laughs> making contact with right. the Enterprise. And finally, finally, uh, they make contact and they, they're they like, hey. After they got ensnared by the tractor beam. Cause yeah. Because they, they, yeah. they were like, all right, they've gone too far. Pull them back. And Pull them back. Grab them. Pull them literally back. dragged them away from the planet. And they're, they're, they, they come on the TV and they're like, hey, we're the survivors, the Lorax survivors. <laughs> don't fucking, don't be mad at us. We just want to land on Haven, which we hear has like um, rejuvenating uh, magical elixirs and you know we heard just, it's a hawaiian leper colony yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they're like it's beautiful we just want like a, a little peninsula it's only like it's only like 12 of us whatever a few of us uh we just want to live out our lives there it's it's the paradise we we don't want to mess with the people there we don't want to get them sick we just want to die in peace yeah which they is very not morbidly bad... say like we plan to die yeah. here yeah, yeah yeah and even if you don't take us we plan to die in this ship yeah it's yeah. like it's like either way we're gonna yeah. die and so. they're, they're and they're like well let us let us talk to those people down there let us talk to the havenites and see what they're up to and see if they're down let me make a broker let me broker a deal and then the the, the lorax the leader of the lorax is like hey that's fine that's fine he's like even if it means that we die in this tractor beam yeah. which I is mean, really very reasonable yeah yeah there's they're such like, an we, agreeable we like 
group of people. Yeah. Well, actually, the first thing that happens when they reveal is that you see the lady yes, immediately. Yes. Oh, yeah. True, true. She's going to get to that. She's front and center. And you then you see Troy's like, what the fuck? Yeah. Teabag's fantasy is there. And, and Deandra's <laughs> like, what the fucking shit, dude? That's the fucking the lady who, yeah. who Teabag likes. And, <laughs> and she's, she, for somebody who's, who's dying, and she looks very healthy and very. That's the thing. They all yeah. look fairly healthy. The yeah. leader looks like a healthy, like Vladimir putin type like he's he does. very like in shape they're all yeah. look pretty in shape and they're wearing these like 80s style like like it reminds me of clothing like, like ballroom dancers might have wore in the 80s yes you know yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> like it, and there's, this, there's is, all, this does there's, not feel like a plague ship it feels all, like everyone's yeah. doing like having a great time there's all <laughs> these black balls that are not to sound <laughs> crass but in in their ship it's weird it's a bunch filled with black balls yeah this is a we gotta fill the background in with something yeah we got this put in and there. so they bring in fucking teabag and teabag is like oh my god you're the chick that i've fantasized my whole life about and they'll and they they recognize him he's like dude that's the dude you've been talking the about. The whole shit. Yeah. 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 They're like, teabag, look at him. He's young. I love the line that he has. It's like, <laughs> yeah. oh my God, I can't believe I drew her so accurately. <laughs> yeah. It's like, damn, I'm good. Damn. Yeah. And so teabag goes to Luxana's room and basically uh, Luxana is very, very like forward. She's like, hey, do you think this is going to look good on my hair if I'm naked? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, um, Basically, they have a conversation about, you know, I don't know what the conversation is really about. I think, I, no, that's the problem. Because <laughs> he goes to her as like, he, he, I think he's going to her to almost ask for an explanation. He's like, yeah. why do you think this happened? And her explanation is, you know, everything's connected. Yeah. What? <laughs> it's like the, the fuck I, does I, that mean? It's <laughs> like, like I, it's like David O. Russell wrote this episode. This it's, episode. It's like this is why this fr- episode frustrates me so much. It's just that is a huge mystery, right? Yeah. Of, of how they know each other. Yeah, and it's not that they just know each other. Like all of the Torellians all know about him too. Yeah, <laughs> like they all like go, oh, he's the guy yeah. from your dream, um, and it's just like how? Well, the Torellian like, ship <laughs> is like a living music video. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah and so it, it it's almost it's almost like trying to explain take on me the music video yeah yeah, yeah. it's like why did this pe- charcoal pencil man take me into his world and who are these weirdo you know authority figures chasing us i don't know no. my, my favorite uh, thing about this scene is in the background you see lurch cleaning like the the crystal or like the <laughs> like the drinkware yeah and, and it's like like he this guy's been pounding all day and he's like ah, i've got to clean these so i could refill them later yeah today. he's like i can't wait for our yeah. next that sweet sweet elixir yeah fucking yeah. alcoholic yeah. <laughs> uh and then and then so teabag is like well they, they got to go help out the lorax people so they're gonna like put together like some medicine and stuff to send them to teleport to them and now teabag's wearing like this crazy get up now like he's he's all dressed up all nice and he, he's yeah. getting all the medicine ready and Doctor, uh, what's her name? Crusher. Getting Crusher. Yes, she's like, oh, thank, thanks for helping, Teabag. And she's like, oh, thanks. You know, he's like, I'm getting all this medicine ready to teleport. Yeah. And then he gets like this sedative. Teabag steals a sedative, dude, and that's a very Teabag move, dude. Yeah, man, <laughs> he's gonna break <laughs> out. Yeah, yeah, he, and, and literally, he's gonna break out of the, the Enterprise. So, he, <laughs> so he goes. He goes. He basically goes to to the the where the ceremony is gonna take place, and he basically says goodbye to his parents and he's like eh, i'm not gonna do this i'm i'm, I'm, I'm out and yeah. he says goodbye to deanna troy and gives her another kiss and it, it's sweet because like they could have made it work i feel like like yeah it seemed could've... like they were compatible she even says in their initial meeting there's only one other time i felt like this about yeah. someone and it's Riker. yeah, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. so it, it's implied that they had a really good connection regardless yeah yeah and then teabag goes into the the teleport room and he's like uh hey i got the medicine ready and the teleport engineer's like all right well as soon as we get the the old clear from the captain we'll beam these up and boom he gives him a shot dude Fucking yeah bam out <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> but you know what like teabag's doing a lot of good acting because you, you could see in his face that like literally you see in his face that like he doesn't hear he like he feels bad doing it he's really scared he, he, yeah, like, he's, yeah he's like he's like oh my god i can't believe i did that but i have to do this i gotta yeah, go i gotta yeah. go mm-hmm. he, he, he robert i think his name is robert kipper uh teabag he's a really good actor he's really yeah, yeah, he's yeah. doing a lot of a lot of uh a lot of emoting in, in a good way mm-hmm. and so he sets the uh the the machine the gizmo and he gets teleported into the into the lorax ship 
and he he gets in there and he's like and they're they're waiting for him they knew he was coming and he looks around and there's pictures of him from from a small child to to present like they've been drawing him for fucking decades dude eh, not mm-hmm. decades years and there he is he sees himself he's like oh man and there she is the 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 girl of his dreams the one he's been having wet dreams about she's finally there but she's she's sick and he's going to try to help them Gonna try she's to not help, sick. Uh, she looks extremely fit and healthy, actually. Yeah, everyone everyone oh, looks yeah. like they're at the the peak physical condition of their lives. Like it's not just that you're like you're healthy, but she's like fit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's got yeah. abs. Yeah, yeah. And then and then they go back to the bri- we, we go back to the bridge, and Wyatt's parents storm into the bridge, and they're like, "Get him out of there! Teleport him back here in here!" And basically, Luke Kerr's like, "Nah, he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> nah, we're not gonna. He, he, we cannot do that. That's the last thing. We're I have no do. desire to do this. Yeah. <laughs> I much rather t- teleport him into the vast emptiness of space than back in here. <laughs> and um." On screen, you you see Teabag, and he's like, "Yeah, I'm gonna stay here with my lady that I've been fantasizing as fantasizing about." And like old Vladimir Putin, Lorax, he's like, "Hey, <laughs> uh, we we knew this. This was this is like destiny. We knew that that we were gonna come here to find Teabag, and Teabag was gonna help us." And yeah, so we're that's why it's so bag. weird. Like yeah. they reveal that their their actual plan wasn't to go to Haven. Yeah, and it's just like. Did ever did this entire ship work together to get their the the captain's daughter laid? Is that essentially what's going on? Like it's I don't understand what the like did is this like a prophecy driven? I was about culture? to say like, it feels yeah. just like a prophecy being fulfilled on their part. Yeah, their music video just, prophecy. <laughs> there's just no indication of anything. They just go ah oh, good. We'll One leave. more time. <laughs> They're just and, interesting uh, of five 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 eight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and all of a sudden, like the next scene is like is like uh Wyatt's parents going, All right, well anyway, we're we're leaving. Uh fuck this. Like it seems like he's happy and uh we don't have to deal with him anymore. Yeah, they they they're outraged at first, but then when they're leaving in the transporter room, they're like, Well, I guess these things happen. Yeah. So, anyway. <laughs> and then the dad's like, eh, you get you can keep the jewels. Fuck it. <laughs> it's fine. And they they bone out of there, and then uh, Luxana shows up, and she she's again fucking razzing fucking uh, uh, <laughs> the captain, and he's yeah. like, oh man, you like you you've had dirty thoughts about me, pornographic thoughts about yeah. me, and then she she threatens to take Riker to just fuck Riker, I guess, <laughs> and she's like, all right, I'll leave, I guess. I and Deanna's I like, won't. no, he's mine. Yeah, you don't fuck him. I yeah. fuck him. And then Lurch finally talks, and he's like, thank you for the drinks. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone's like, "Oh, he talks." The fuck His only it? line, yeah. yeah. And they're like, "Well, there, he got a pee bump uh, <laughs> and, and a sag card mm-hmm. uh, with that line." That's true. Maybe that was like a, a big reason why that yeah, he just yeah. needed that line. Yeah. And then, uh, and then Lurch has to sit down because he's like, "No, in the, the last scene, I had a hard time. I had to like <laughs> bend my knees and for the whole goddamn scene. This time, I'm going to sit down." So he places the luggage, sits down, and then they get teleported out. And her her last words, Luxana's last words, are like. Captain, you should be ashamed of yourself. Zelo, which was her old valet, never had such thoughts about me. And he had pornographic thoughts. Hey, yeah. uh, sorry, I had to yell at my cat. It was scratching my goddamn <laughs> couch that I just bought. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, they teleport out and they're like, ah, well, glad that's fucking over. And but 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 the the captain did not like the last joke. He was like, "Nope, I I yeah. do not have pornographic thoughts about anybody." Right? <laughs> How dare I'm you, celibate? <laughs> I only fuck one one thing and one thing only. That's my fucking hand. Um, <laughs> and Beverly and, Crusher and Beverly Crusher and T. That one time when I got hot. drunk. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, and so the captain goes back to the bridge and he's like, "Well, I'm happy that Deanna's staying, even though like we lost the dude." To probably you know a horrible disease you know yeah, yeah. that doesn't look too horrible actually yeah they'll be fine. fine yeah they've lived he'll this single handedly like the Tyrellians believe he'll single handedly find a cure for it yeah somehow. and and then they 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 just get the fuck out of there they bone out they never go this they was don't the time- like you don't you wouldn't think like maybe they would remain in contact with the inter- like the, no, the federation no, wait, to wait, be- wait their point was to fucking rest and relax. <laughs> but they never, they never, they never did it. Oh yeah, they, yeah, they were like, uh, we've been on Haven too long. Let's get the fuck out. They of here. didn't even go to Haven. They were just hovering over. It. <laughs> hey man, they got tea bag. They got what they got for. They got what they came for. Yeah, yeah. dude. Uh, what a 
What an episode. This is a this is this is a fun one for me. I enjoyed it. <laughs> I, like I like the weird I like ones. The, I like the idea cuz there's a it's kind of weird cuz you know they uh Luxana and and uh Deanna both say that they oh we haven't seen each other in a very long time, right? You know, so mm-hmm. you don't understand. But the very last episode, she was dropped off of Beta Z uh, <laughs> before the. So, so the implication is that even though she's on her home planet, she was trying to avoid her mother as much as possible. That's funny. That's <laughs> I, 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 I can, yeah, th- that's believable to me. <laughs> it's like it's like when you visit a city and you have a family member there, but you never tell them you were there because you're like, I, I wanted to not do that right now. And then you very strategically don't take. Or post any pictures <laughs> of where you are, or what you've done. Uh, yeah, yeah. Rookie yeah, mistake. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Well, you can't. You can't do that, dude. Nah, man. <laughs> are you amateur? Yeah. <laughs> Bush League, dude. Haven. Um, that was that was Haven. The episode known as Haven. Uh, there was a lot of there was Teabag, which was my favorite character on this episode. Eh, my favorite character in a while. I I, I really enjoyed Teabag. Oh. Cool. Well, that, I'm I'm glad. I am glad. I I personally can't really get over the hang up of the like the mi- central mystery has no solution. That's that's what really frustrates me about that episode. But yeah, the Luxwan is there. She's fun. I don't think Wyatt really ever shows up again, but he was fine. It was a fun interaction. The dinner scene was fun. There's a bunch of wacky things happening, and it's a time. It's a time. Anyway, it's a time of our lives. <laughs> it just it uh, feels so, very sitcommy to me, just overall. Yeah, it's like what, how Ricardo was saying a few episodes ago. Like a, a nice thing about TNG is that it can feel like it can support many different types of scripts. Mm-hmm. So, like you know, uh, hide and Q is kind of you know more of like philosophical, existential sort of idea, uh, but but through the lens of Riker versus Picard, right? Right, and this, and this episode is more of like- a slapstick, almost, yeah, it's for like, a, lo- a huge part of it, and then- Who's imagining fucking me now? Yeah, <laughs> and then like a star-crossed lovers, you know, love triangle sort of part two, and that's, you know, it's, it's interesting. Uh, TNG could support a lot of different- I mean, next episode's gonna be- <laughs> Is the big goodbye, which is a very <laughs> our first major holodeck episode. Oh yeah, and, uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, that, <laughs> that one's gonna be good. That one will be really fun. If nothing else, um, the uh, costumes are amazing. Yeah, yeah. Um, but in any case, uh, Haven Ricardo, you seem to like the episode a lot. What would you rate? I mean, this? I liked it, and but I still, I'm, I'm gonna go with like um uh, eight, eight and a half. Is that is okay. that a, are we doing halves? Yeah, we are. You can do whatever you want, yeah, man. Like you can do whatever. Hell yeah. <laughs> do eight and a half all right dan what do you what do you think mm, i'd put this in like seven ish territory okay me. okay okay i'd give it like like a six i think yeah just because uh i i just i think when i think about these episodes I, i'd rather think about them from uh the script perspective first and then move out from there but anyway uh that was haven which was uh, mixed, mixed. Dan and Ricardo had, had, a, had a good time. And uh, I was like, hey, and you had whatever. a really awful time. <laughs> it definitely wasn't horrible. I, I just find the that aspect of the frustrating. But anyway, if you guys have been enjoying this podcast, you can find more episodes of it at newbiestartrek.com. That's N E W B I E Star Trek.com. Also, Why'd you listen to this yeah. one first? <laughs> well, it's listed backwards, right on the on on the on the podcast. So they may just click this one first. So it's very possible, actually. So uh, the, the, the yeah. So uh, <laughs> uh, we don't also do have that. a. a <laughs> I don't know. It could happen. It can. <laughs> like like when when I was listening to Talking Simpsons, for example, when I first started it, I actually didn't start from the beginning. I started from an episode I recognized. Well, actually, and, um. Well, at least in their free feed, they did not uh, allow you to start from the beginning because all of season one was behind a paywall. Well, that, when they changed it, I think initially when Talking Simpsons was going on, it wasn't a paywall. And then uh, it was actually quite easy just to- A paywall the was there paddle. from when I discovered it. I don't know if you discovered it before I did, but- Really? Because I remember uh, after that, re- watching it from the beginning, I didn't pay anything. So, <laughs> well, wait, did you listen to all of season one though? Yeah, I did after that. Yeah. After, after I listened to like two episodes, I was like, oh, I'll just listen to season one. And I was like, cause I know that they did like the very, very first episode ever, but they didn't make all of season one public. 
Hmm. So you I might have know, been maybe fooled I'm... by one or two that were made I... available. I could be. I could be misremembering. I could be misremembering. I think you are. Anyway, but edit all of this out. <laughs> Uh, we also have another podcast called the Fugitive Frames Film Podcast. It's done with the three of us as well. Plus, usually we have a guest on. And uh, basically, we just kind of talk about movies. We, we we list movies based on a topic. You know, sometimes it could be like a horror film or a horror topic, or it could be as movies about as horrors. Like <laughs> it could be that specific, honestly. Yeah, the the we, girlfriend experience. We could be, yeah, there's a lot, oh. a lot of movies. <laughs> We've we've had what we've had an episode that's uh, about just a year, so that that's a thing yeah. too, and or broad like video game movies, you know, it's yeah. kind of a broader topic. So, uh, you know, and that's also you can find that at fugitiveframes.com. and then uh, all three of us also plus Marcel, uh, we have a YouTube channel called Fugitive Games, haha, <laughs> uh, where we do let's plays of games and sometimes we do reviews and discussions of games and sometimes we do compilations of our whole LPs and little fun things here and there. Right now we're going through Phoenix Wright. Uh, we're going through the the penultimate case if you get it with the with the the five case version depending on which version you're getting. And then we're also going through a hat in time, which is uh, been a lot of fun. Uh, it's it, we. I, I initially wanted to start playing it because it's kind of cutesy, but it's it's it actually turned out really to be fun. not cutesy at all. <laughs> well, there's a part where it's genuinely kind of scary. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that's yeah. <laughs> and then uh, uh, and besides that, it's actually a pretty solid feeling platformer, and that's really all you ever want from a platformer for the movement to feel really good. Uh, so that's, that's good for that. So. You can find that at fugitive.games. That's the URL, www.fugitive.games. Or you can just search for Fugitive Games on YouTube. So that's my Also, way. if you've been liking the, yeah. And, and if you guys have been liking this podcast in general, how about, uh, you know, head on over to Apple Podcasts, you know, maybe uh, drop a little uh, review for us, you know, if you've been liking it, tell us what, you, what we're doing good, what we're not doing good. We'll, you know, take it to heart because, you know, we're always trying to grow as a podcast. We're trying to listen to you guys. And, you know, we also got you know, random stuff on like Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, et cetera. But anyway, th this episode was Haven. Next episode will be The Big Goodbye, which I think is a first season episode that Dan and I both look at pretty fondly because it's pretty fun. <laughs> I don't even remember what happens it's in it. I just remember seeing the thumbnail for it. And I'm like, oh man, those costumes. Yeah, it's it's because it's uh, it takes the holodeck concepts and then just takes it pretty earnestly like they don't go they do go we're oh, we're in a hollow uh what's it called the uh, simulation the pretense but the, the, is flimsy as hell yeah but then the stakes become real and then you go oh okay we gotta actually follow <laughs> yeah <laughs> this this malarkey that's going on and it becomes fun it's so but dumb. until next time everybody uh i've been marvin with dan and ricardo and you've been all of us <laughs> hey and then uh we'll see you guys next time have a have a great day everybody goodbye later you are the weakest link <laughs> goodbye <laughs> you're god does, <laughs> does that show still happen anymore no i don't know why i did that <laughs> now i want to look it up weakest link i hope not <laughs>